The black and white adjustment layer in Photoshop was originally designed as a non-destructive way to convert colour images into black and white. But it's actually a fantastic tool for colour grading. By adjusting how each colour channel translates to light and dark, you can completely reshape the tones and depth in your image. Combining with blend modes and opacity, it becomes a subtle way to control contrast and colour harmony without changing any actual colours. In this video, I'll show you how I use the black and white adjustment layer for colour grading and what it can do to your images. Here is a composite that I created for fun. I created the background, I added in the fox and then the other elements, the leaves, the ravens, the basket with the eggs. The rest was all about colour grading and getting depth of colour. And one of the techniques that I used is the black and white adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is use this technique and show you the shift in colour and tones that you can achieve in digital art or your photos. You can be soft or subtle in the colour shift or vibrant. The choice is yours. I use this more towards the end when I'm getting into that final stages of colour grading, but you could use it anywhere in your workflow just to change those colour tones. And for me, in my images, colour is just as important as the image itself. Let's get in, check out the black and white adjustment layer and play with the different sliders and see what we can achieve. If you're new to watching my videos, this workspace is set up for me how I want to work. So for example, I have all the tools, my adjustment layers, my layers panel, all on the right hand side. When you first start in Photoshop, the tools are over on the left and I've got a video in my playlist about how you can adjust your workspace. I find it works for me, particularly in the kind of work that I'm doing. I'm going to come up to the adjustment layers and choose the black and white. Now, when I click on the black and white, you'll see it converts to a black and white image. And I'm going to play with the sliders and see what I can achieve with this. The image had a lot of blue. I'll turn this layer off and you can see there is the blue background, the blue on the jacket, blue tones coming through the tree trunks. I'll turn that layer back on. What I'm going to do now is either get the blue or the cyan slider and I'm going to move it left and right and see what I can do. What it basically is working on is the blue tones and making it stronger or lighter in the image. So I'll turn it up to the left and you can see now that is it changing and there's subtle shifts coming through now. If I get the blues and I move it to the right, or the left, can you see the change in the tones? But remember, I don't want a black and white image. I'm working with the tones. What I am going to do now is come over to a blend mode, choose, let's say, for example, multiply. Now have a look at that. That gives a total different color and tonal range in that by using multiply. What about if I come down to lighten? Look at the color shift that happens with those sliders that I moved. Let's come into screen, overlay, soft light. Now let's say that I like soft light, but it's a bit too dark. Let's play with the opacity slider and move it and adjust it to where I think, oh, that gives me a nice tonal depth of color. So I'm going to turn that layer off and on. And you can see it's now shifted those colors. What else can we play with in the black and white adjustment layer? I'm going to come up to preset, click on default, and you'll see that you'll have a drop down menu with lots of choices. And I'll go in and I'll click on one and I think, oh, that's interesting. Let me see what it does. For example, I'm going to click on infrared. See what's changed. I'll turn that layer off and on so you can see 
that the blues have changed. There's some areas that have got darker in the image, but this is where the magic happens. I can come up here and play with the blend mode and I might choose darker color, linear burn. Now have a look at linear burn, color burn, multiply. I like multiply, but I'm losing a lot of the detail, but I do like the tonal range. So I'm going to click on multiply and adjust the opacity. I'll drop it down to right about, let's say, 50%. It's, it's how your eye is judging color and it's what appeals to you. I'm going to turn that layer off and on. Have a look. It's deepened that color depth. If I come to the sliders, let's see what I can play with. If I get the red slider and I start moving it to the left, let's see what changes. And there's subtle red tones at the top where the leaves are. If I move it to the right, I'm lifting those red tones. If I come to the yellows, let's have a look to see where the yellows are in the image. And I'm moving the slider along. I'm not looking for a formula. I'm just looking at the image and thinking, am I happy with the color depth? What about the greens? Are there greens in this image? If I just move that slider left and right, very little change. What about cyan? If I boost that to the right, have a look what's happening with the blues. I could go right up to the right-hand side or I can drop it right down to the left. And you can see, particularly the shift in color on the jacket. And this gives you a little bit more control. If you're going to use hue and saturation, that strips a bit of the color, where this is just playing with these channels. If I come into the blue slider and move it left and right, I can play with that. Is there magenta? If I shift that along, it's working with the sliders or the presets. Let's come up to the preset and choose another. Maximum black, what's that going to do? I'll click on that and I can see it's now given some depth, but have a look. I've still got it on blend mode of multiply. So if I come back to normal, have a look what it's done. It's stripped out some of the blue because colors are made a combination of different colors. For example, you've got your primary colors, then you've got your tertiary colors, monochromatic colors. So a true color can be made of different colors to get. For example, blue and red can give you purple. Now, I'm not going to go full on into color theory, but just giving you some ideas of playing with these sliders, how you can shift your color depth and tone or shades within your image. Let's play some more and see what we can do with this image. Let's look at the properties panel of the black and white adjustment layer. And you can see there's different numbers in the sliders. For example, red's got 40, yellows have got 60. When you add a black and white adjustment layer, Photoshop looks at the underlying colors, red, yellow, green and so on and it should be converted into brightness values. So those slider positions that you're seeing in photoshops are the default, what it's looking at at your image. What they do do is maintain the natural contrast, avoid losing any detail in common tones like skin or foliage and sky, which is why when I was playing with some sliders the blues were changing. They're not set to zero. I'm going to go in now and play with a few more sliders and presets and more blend modes. I'm going to go up to presets, click on default, and I'm going to choose another filter. That's what I call it. Let's go yellow and see what I can achieve with it. I'll click on yellow. Now have a look at what's changed. There's certain areas that have got brighter in their values or value of color. I'm going to come over to the blend mode. 
I'm going to choose luminosity and let's see what that does. Definitely not, but it gives a good example of what is shifting using that preset in the black and white adjustment layer and a blend mode. I'll go to color. Doesn't change much. Saturation, hue, divide. Interesting. Subtract. Definitely dark and moody. Exclusion. No. Hard mix. Maybe not. Linear light, vivid light, and a hard light. I'll go up to soft light and overlay. And I think, oh no, that's a bit too dark for me. Let's come up to screen and see what I can achieve with that yellow filter. I'm going to drop the opacity and see what I can get. Now, have a look at the areas of the image that have got lighter. It's those leaves that are in the tree because obviously there's yellow in that those leaves. I don't like that, so I think what I will do is change it back to normal. I'm going to bring up the opacity up to 100%. I'm going to come up to my preset. I'm going to choose maximum black, or let's play maximum white. Did it change? Yes, it did. But now this is where I'll play with the blend mode. And I'll go darken, multiply. Now I like multiply, but I'm losing detail. Can I get that detail back with opacity? I'll come up here, adjust the slider, and I'll play with it and go, that's exactly where I want. It's got depth. It's got, to me, vibrancy in colour. And remember, everyone sees colour differently. And what I've been doing is working with colour over the years, and my eye has got to tune to what I like. But you have to find your style in colour, what you like. I'll come in and I think I'll turn this layer off. Very subtle, but I'm getting depth and mood. Let's come up to preset, change it. Let's have a look at maximum black. Did that change? Yes, it did. And this is where I will use this technique just to give a little shift of color or tone in my images. As I said, towards the end, as my go-to color grading, I don't use it on every image, but this is a fantastic technique to use for color grading to get your depth in color. You can use it on digital art. You can use it on images that are created with AI or your own photos. Don't be frightened to play with it and experiment and see what it can do. Some people look for reality in colour. I don't. I look for colour depth, shades, tones within my images. For me, colour can also be a storytelling tool. Have fun with this technique. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and follow for my weekly tutorials.